Hello friends, welcome to Dr. T. Today we will be discussing case history in orthodontics, how to take a good case history in orthodontics. So what's a case history? In simple terms, case history is nothing. It's a discrete list of problems, you know, each defined. And uh, it's the first step towards our treatment planning and it's a very critical step in the treatment planning because if your case history is right, uh, you can, your, then your clinical examination accordingly will be right. And if your clinical examination is right, diagnosis will be right, and then your treatment planning is will be right. So if something goes wrong in the case history, it can affect your treatment plan. So in simple terms, we will say that a discrete list of problems each defined is called as case history. And the purpose is the plan of the treatment should become evident itself. The diagnosis and the treatment plan, a preliminary treatment plan should become evident at the time of taking case history only. So this is how we proceed when a, uh, you know, a patient comes to our clinic. First of all, we as you know go for the case history, take the case history, do the clinical examination, ask for diagnostic aids such as study casts, radiographs, and the photographs. Then you know we reach a diagnosis and then we formulate a treatment plan. So case history is the first step towards the treatment plan. So how do we take case history? Case history is taken by a special questionnaire. You know, all of us have used that questionnaire in our UG and there are different types of question questionnaires and usually we use a type of questionnaire used, given by Rakosi. Okay. So what are the components of uh, case history questionnaire? First name, it, uh, uh, the importance of the name is it helps in the identification of the patient and then it helps with the communication of the patient it helps in the maintaining the records and the most important it has a beneficial psychological effect on the patient so you should always try to call your patient you know by his name that way he feels that a psychological effect is on his mind that the patient the patient thinks that the doctor knows me and he knows about my my problem and he will take care of me then age before discussing our age, I would like to tell you that there are two types of ages, chronological age and biological age. So the age which we mention in the case history sheet is the chronological age. It's nothing but you know, calculating the age of the patient by his uh, date of birth. And what is the importance of the age? Importance of the age is that uh, there are several uh, malocclusions in terms of orthodontic, orthodontics. We will speak. There are, uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, malocclusions which are, uh, you know, which are normal in an age group like uh, 9 to 11 broadband phenomenon, you will have midline diastema, that time it's very very common. So you don't have to go for the orthodontic intervention. So there are some anomalies and some malocclusions which are, you know, which are uh, related to age. So there is a list of some malocclusions also you know, called as self-correcting malocclusions. Like childhood you will find deep bite, deep bite is uh, normal in childhood. In childhood uh, spacing is normal, so that time you don't uh, need, uh, you don't need any intervention and any intervention for you know those uh, cases so the first one is uh, the importance of the age is that uh, you know, a lot of malocclusions are you know very common to some age these are self-correcting malocclusion so at that time we don't have to go for any intervention number one number two uh, we can get a idea about by the age of the patient we can get the idea about the growth of the patient and accordingly you know we can decide what type of intervention we should do like my functional appliances uh, you know give the best results when the patient is in the growing phase so we have to use them in the growing phase and once the patient is out of the growing phase we have to go for the surgical option and uh, growth modifications done can be done at specific ages so all this can be calculated by age but what we record is a chronological age and chronological age is a rough uh, indicator of, uh, of the growth of the patient so what we do we assess the biological age and we assess the biological age by uh, skeletal assessment is the dental assessment then the roughly by chronological age also we can you know assess mm -hmm. then uh, by you know onset of puberty we can assess uh, the biological age so, but mostly what we use is the skeletal and the dental and uh, skeletal and dental are very accurate and um, among skeletal and dental it has been seen that dental is very accurate so how do we assess we do hand wrist radiographs we do cervical vertebrae radiographs, then assess the maturity of the cervical vertebrae. We see for the ossification centers in the hand wrist radiographs, and in we see the tooth development. Uh, you know, uh, Demergen, yeah, Demergen was the research uh, researcher who gave about uh, the who gave about the mineralization of the different stages of the mineralization of the tooth. Uh, 
so those charts we use and uh, give a specific number to the specific uh, you know development according to the development of the tooth and determine the uh, growth and the age of the patient and it has been seen that the dental one has very very high accuracy as compared to the skeletal ones coming to gender and the sex what is the importance of gender and sex uh, it has been seen that the timing of the growth between males and females is not same it's different so if you are assessing uh, you know the growth of the patient in male and female it will be it will be di- different especially the growth spurts growth what are growth spurts growth spurts are uh, the increased rate of growth increased rate of uh, growth phases of increased rate of growth so it's different in males and uh, females so accordingly the intervention timing in males and females will be different what happens females usually precede males in terms of growth spurts puberty and the termination of the growth so that growth termination in females will be earlier as compared to the males so we should be well aware of this coming to address it helps in identifying the location and uh, it helps in the communication sometimes you have to give a reminder to a patient or you have to send his report to the patient you can give uh, you know you can use uh, his address uh, number 2 Uh, number 2 can say it gives the idea about the socio economic status of the patient as we know there are you know a lot of uh, like lo- in developed countries the patient the socio economic uh, con- socio economic condition of the patient is will be good and uh, in developing countries it will be average under developed countries you know it will be very very poor and uh, you know uh, so it also yeah important is it also gives a you know clue about some of the disease like fluorosis it's out there south india you know once was known for fluorosis so it can give idea about uh, uh, it can give idea about some disease and sometimes sometimes i would say according to the race it will also give idea about the malocclusion for example in south india you will find bimax is more common in uh, north india it's class 1 with crowding in caucasians or the europeans it's class 2 so it gives you a rough idea about the malocclusion when we speak in terms of the orthodontics then we mentioned the date why do we mention the date it gives us a rough idea about the treatment time how much you know time it will take and when the treatment will finish or if the treatment has already finished we can calculate how much time the treatment has taken then it helps to also calculate the chronological age using your date of birth opd number obviously to maintain the records in the mrd medical report records department and this is the number with which you can then uh, ask uh, for the patient uh, records occupation and the income so shows sorry occupation and the income of the patient uh, it uh, helps you to predict the socio economic status of the patient and accordingly you know uh, determine the plan of the treatment and this can give you idea that how much awareness the patient and his parents have about a particular uh, malocclusion about a particular disease and how will they will proceed and it also gives you know a, a rough idea that whether the well, whether the patient will be able to bear the cost of the treatment as we know uh, um, right now if clear somebody has to go for clear aligners it's very costly then uh, lingual treatment if somebody has to go it's you know less than clear aligners but uh, it's uh, costlier than labial uh, labial orthodontics and somebody has to go for labial orthodontics it's uh, it's not as uh, it's uh, it's cheaper as compared to the clear aligner and uh, and uh, lingual but still the cost is more so it will give you an idea the most important chief complaint will ask the patient why he has come to the hospital and you have to record the chief complaint in his own words and uh, you don't have to use any medical terms you don't have to use patient complaints of the malocclusion you have to the patient usually say we have irregularly placed anterior teeth or you will say we have a crooked teeth or you will say i have forwardly placed uh, teeth or you will say my canine is very high in my uh, oral cavity something like that and you have to use patients on words you don't have to use medical terms but sometimes patient will speak vague language vague terms like uh, he will speak anything that time you have to put leading questions to the patient to determine this chief complaint and what and the importance of the chief complaint is it helps to identify the priorities and the desires of the patient for example a patient comes to the clinic with the history of the sorry the chief complaint of the pain and he tells i have pain in uh, right region you can't send the patient to orthodontist or the or a uh, or a prosthodontist for the replacement of teeth or the orthodontic treatment you have to address his pain so by the, by that uh, by the chief complaint you have you will be able to identify the priorities of the patient and the desires of the patient whether the desires are 
uh, you know can we can, can as a clinician we fulfill these desires or not you know that we can uh, decide later on so this is the chief complaint and uh, there are two logical reasons why patients come for the treatment uh, you know especially in the dental field either the patient has impaired dentofacial aesthetics which most of the patients in my in the orthodontics uh, have the patients who report to orthodontics most of the patients report with impaired dental aesthetics and uh, impaired function can be second and it can be both of them but mostly the patient comes with uh, you know impaired dental uh, dentofacial aesthetics as uh, chief complaint so we have to establish the importance uh, of uh, you know what's more important sometimes a patient will come with recession and ask for the orthodontic treatment we will not go for the orthodontic treatment because we know his function is also impaired so to first restore uh, his uh, periodontal uh, health then only we can move on so you have to uh, you have to ask the patient the leading questions to establish his his priority his chief complaint so leading questions are always, always important we we'll ask about the family history because we know a lot of malocclusions and many types of malocclusions are run in families very famous habsburg family class 3 and able forward and uh, cleft lip and cleft patients they are uh, there is a recessive gene recessive uh, gene for uh, cleft lip and cleft palate which can be transferred from the parents to parents to the offspring then uh, class 2 also has a you know a genetic component uh, which is uh, which class 2 is known to be you know transferred uh, from parents to their offspring so you can uh, assess whether uh, the malocclusion has a genetic component or it is an environmental component and accordingly your treatment plan will vary when you will ask for the prenatal history remember prenatal history you will not ask to the patient because he will not uh, you know be remembering anything about his prenatal phase so you will be you will, you will ask the mother about prenatal history and uh, you will ask mother about the pre- condition during pregnancy whether you know she had a good food whether uh, she it was a premature delivery if uh, if it's a premature delivery remember that uh, babies premature babies usually have some defects some abnormalities and then you'll ask about the type of delivery was it a cesarean was it a normal or was it a forceful delivery if it is a forceful delivery then definitely patient can have your patient or, or the the child who is born can have two uh, abnormalities one uh, he can have tmj or uh, tmj disturbances his uh, tmj will not be growing properly he can have mandibular hypoplasia then he can have hearing defects hearing defect defect because uh, what happens the forceps the beaks of the forceps sometimes press on the mastoid mastoid process developing mastoid uh, process and uh, causes the injury and you got you have to ask the patient whether he has taken whether she has taken any drugs during pregnancy taldo taldemoid as we know causes you know the uh, uh, hypoplasia of the upper and lower limbs then you have to ask about tetracycline if the patient has uh, taken uh, tetracycline during late pregnancy then she can then the baby the baby can have tetracycline induced uh, uh, um, then dysplasia dysplasia of, of the teeth or staining it can have tetracycline staining but more important is dysplasia then some infections uh, during pregnancy like german measles rubella cause cause congenital deformities scrubella can, can cause cleft lip and uh, cleft palate during uh, you know uh, to the growing child then postnatal history you have to ask about type of feeding whether it was breastfeeding whether it was, it was bottle feeding breastfeeding is the best for the you know uh, the baby uh, bottle feeding has its own consequences like uh, rampant caries early childhood caries and caries can cause decrease in the arch length remember caries can cause decrease in the arch length then you have to ask about the presence of the habits of in the patient whether the patient was thumb sucking whether uh, the patient was mouth breather whether uh, the patient had trained infantile swallow all these can lead can lead to malocclusions and uh, usually the habits are retained to adult life and then you have to give you correction uh, you know we have to give the correction therapy you have to give corrective appliances uh, so you have to ask about the habits then ask about the milestones of the normal development at what age the you know baby started to crawl what age he started to hold the hand what age he started to walk all these milestones of the normal mm-hmm. development give you idea about the development of the patient uh, or the uh, or the uh, of the patient that whether he was a late maturer whether he was average maturer or he was early maturer and accordingly the treatment plan will vary 
coming to medical history the medical history you have to ask a patient whether he you know he is taking any uh, any drugs he is taking he was you know taking any surgery for example if patient had adenoids or tonsils uh, enlarged enlarged adenoids or tonsils during his childhood he can have problem and he had problems with breathing so his tongue posture will he will keep tongue stay tongue forward and what will happen he will have a pseudo class 3 and uh, that can lead to open bite uh, so you have to ask whether he went uh, underwent for any surgery of adenoids or tons, tonsils. Then in epileptic patients, if they are having uh, anticonvulsant drugs, they can have gingival hyperplasia. And epileptic patients, you can't give removable appliances uh, because uh, anytime they can get epileptic attacks, you have to go for uh, fixed appliances only. And uh, uh, then if a patient uh, has a rheumatic fever, and uh, you have to do banding, you have to give prophylaxis because banding can cause trauma. And uh, again, if, if there is uh, epilepsy, uh, you have to be ready you know, with uh, antiepileptic drugs on the chair side because you have to be ready for uh, anything can happen to the epilepsy patient. He can get epileptic attack anytime. So you have to be ready for his, uh, his management, like early morning appointments. You have to load a 10, a, 10 mg benzodiazepine, benzodiazepine injection you have to keep it loaded by your chair side always whenever you call epilepsy patient then it has been seen that sometimes orthodontic treatment like removal appliances cause a recurrent abscess ulceration we have to manage that also so this is a list of uh, medical conditions and, and their implications you can um, go through them as our time doesn't uh, you know, permit us to go you know, through all of them so you can just uh, pause the video and have a look at them These are the medical conditions and uh, their implications. Coming to dental history, so dental history, you have to ask, uh, you know, see the age of the eruption of the deciduous and the permanent teeth. That will give you idea about rough idea about how the patient's uh, teeth are developing and uh, what type of uh, you know malocclusion you are expecting in the patient. Then you have to ask about the history of the extraction, decay of the tooth, tooth restorations done to trauma to the dentition if there is any trauma to the dentition usually teeth get ankylosed and you know doing orthodontic treatment in those patients is very difficult then with the decay um, decay and restorations you can get a rough idea about the oral hygiene of the patient and uh, you know you can uh, you'll get a rough idea how uh, how clean uh, the patient keeps his mouth and you know how to proceed with the patient so this is how you know you take the dental his history and uh, uh, accordingly if there are any teeth missing uh, you have to plan for your anchorage, you have to you know, plan for uh, your extractions, how will you gain space and all that. So the dental history is important uh, for all these things. Thank you. Hope you liked the video. Don't you know forget to subscribe to our channel on the YouTube and like on our page on the Facebook.